Hi, everybody. This is Janelle from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. Hey, Norma, how you doing? I hope everybody is doing okay. And I'm going to give it a couple of minutes because I know there were a couple of people that were waiting in, you know, the chat to get in. So just give it a couple because I know usually some people show up kind of late and stuff. I hope you're enjoying the weather out there, Norma. Hey, Miss Magic, how are you? And stuff. Well, I have really great news and stuff. I have reached a thousand subscribers. So I am like super excited. Okay, so this is embroidery happy hour. So one of the things that I told my husband, I said, oh, I gotta get champagne. I gotta celebrate and stuff. So I actually got champagne. I got yellow tail bubbles. So I am going to pour me a little bit of champagne because I am celebrating a thousand subscribers. I did not think I was going to get a thousand subscribers because I was just having fun with this. But hey, to all of us, we did it, you know, so I'm excited. I am really, really, really super excited and stuff. This is like really cool. So salute, you know. <laughs> hey, Blanca, how are you? How are you doing? Hey, Edith. Hey, Renee. And stuff. So this Friday, one of the things that I was thinking about was, you know, because I'm always trying to come up with the topics for every Friday, right, for when we meet and stuff. And then I started thinking about, you know what, I should try to um, get a collection of all of the tips and tricks. Hey, Sarah, how you doing? Hey, Robin. Hey, Tracy. Um, of all the, you know, little things that I've learned for the past year and some of the new stuff that I kind of um, learned this week, actually, too. Um, there were a couple of things and I wrote them all down and stuff. And I wanted to share this stuff with you guys. Um, some of this stuff, I actually even learned the first one that I want to talk to you guys about. I actually learned it from um, Barbara, Miss Barbara. Uh, we were talking about needles, right, and how to change needles. And one of the things that she mentioned, which was really cool, is you know, when you're unscrewing your needle, a lot of times your needle will fall. So she came up and she she had typed in and she was like, hey, put a napkin underneath your needle and then unscrew it so that when the needle falls, it falls on the napkin and it doesn't fall into your the hole, you know, which I was kind of like, that's pretty sharp because I did not think about doing that because a lot of times when I'm unscrewing my needle, it falls right in and then you have to kind of like dig for it to get it out. And sometimes you run the risk of bending the needle or messing up something in there. So that was a really, really, really good tip. So just, you know, just wanted to share that and stuff. So, um, and I wrote down several and also I came up with some stuff um, that I wanted to share with you guys also. So. We covered needles, okay? I'm on a roll, okay? I guess I'm on a roll because I'm all excited because I got a thousand, you know? So anyway, all right, enough of that. Let's get back to work, okay? So changing the needle. So that was pretty, pretty neat. So it doesn't have to be just a napkin. You can take like a piece of paper, put it underneath the, the needle or and stuff, or just get a spare uh, scrap fabric or something, just put it underneath. So when you're changing your needle, it just falls right on the fabric or the piece of paper, or the napkin, whatever you choose. And you don't have it falling into the, the sewing hole. Okay. I don't know what you call that thing, but I think you guys know what I mean. Okay. So, um, that was a pretty, pretty neat thing. The other thing, um, that I wanted to share with you was, you know, in the Etsy shop, one of the big things that um, I come across, and it's really me kind of like being kind of lazy and stuff. It's like you make the stuff, right? But then you have to do the administrative side of, you know, owning your own shop and advertising your products, right? So you have to go ahead and you got to go into Etsy and you have to create your listings, right? So a lot of times I'm not that great at taking a picture and stuff like that. So I was kind of like, all right. You know, you see all these other Etsy shops and they have these beautiful listings and you could tell they take the time and everything. They, they mark it up really, really well. 
Now, when it comes to um, sh showing a, doing a markup of um, a shirt that you heat press with vinyl, that's very easy to do. If you can do that in Cricut, and I'm going to make a video on doing that. Um, that's very, very easy to do. However, though, you cannot use the same method to show off your embroidery. So what ends up happening is you have to actually create the embroidery, then take a picture of it, and then, you know, put it on your Etsy shop. So that can get kind of costly, especially when you want to advertise like custom shirts and stuff like that. Because one of the issues that I was having was I don't have any small kids. So it's not like I can go ahead and make Carlito a shirt, you know, with the number one on it. I mean, you know, the kid's 20, you know, <laughs> well, he's not a kid. He's a man now. So he's 20 years old. So, you know, and I can go out and I can buy a bunch of shirts that are a size two or a size 4T, you know, those little small kid sizes. But what ends up happening is then you embroider it, right? And then you put somebody's name on it. And then what do you do with the shirt, right? You either give it away to somebody or, you know, you just throw it out as a sample, right? So I was thinking about it and then I came up with this. Um, I came up with, you know, I went to Michael's and then I was walking around and I saw this. This is white felt. So I was looking at it and I'm like, this is pretty strong material. You know, it, it kind of feels like a shirt. I mean, it's not exactly uh, the same fabric as a shirt, but I was like, hey, this is this is not bad. So what I did was I I bought several of these. They're they're not that expensive. They're they run about like, I don't know, I think it was like 50 cents each or something. And they were on sale. And, um, you know, I decided to take one and put it in the hoop and stitch it out and see what happens, right? So when I did that, this is what I came up with. So I was like, this isn't bad, you know, because this is what I would do on a little kid's shirt. So um, what I did was I took the shirt and then I just folded it, you know, like this. And you, you pin it, you know, you just take little pins and then you kind of fold it, you know, like you see a lot of people do kind of like this. And then they go and they place it somewhere and they take a picture. So I was kind of like, this is a very inexpensive way for you to test out stitches. Because, you know, how sometimes you could, you could buy an embroidery file. You really don't know how it's going to stitch out and stuff like that. And you don't want to waste fabric. Fabric can get expensive, even if you were to go to the store and buy a yard of white fabric. And then say, okay, I'm going to cut up the, the yard in pieces. You still spend a lot of money on that yard of fabric. And I don't think that that would be um, cheaper than if you were to do this. So what I did was I just got a whole bunch of the felts, which were like, 50, I think they were like 50 cents or maybe 40 cents. I think it was cheaper than that. But um, it, 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 stitched out pretty nicely and stuff, okay? Now, the other thing, too, that I was thinking was, you know, you see um, online, a lot of these um, folks, they, you know, they fold them up really nice and everything, then they take these really nice pictures. They have these, like, really nice backgrounds, right? So I had an ironing board that I created, and I was using that as the background. It has, like, these little birds and stuff like that. Well, it really doesn't look that great. So I went on Amazon, okay? Because you know me, I'm always on there, okay? So anyway, I went on Amazon, and then I was able to pick up these things. And I was kind of like, oh, this is not a bad idea. Let me show you this. This is called, um, it's, I think they call it a backdrop for um, photo boxes and stuff like that. So all this is is just vinyl. It's just a big piece of vinyl sheet. This is the five by seven and it cost me, I think it was like about six, seven bucks. And look how big it is. It's huge, it's really huge. Now, of course, I don't need all this to take a picture. So I figured I can take this and I can cut it in half and then I can just put it on the floor and then put a light over it. And then all I have to do is just take this, fold it up nicely, put it against this and there goes my picture. See, so um, 
and I didn't spend too much money, you know, and I got to test out my stitch. And, you know, this also serves for another purpose, too, also. Let's say that um, you got somebody that comes to visit, right? And, you know, they want to see a sample of some of the stuff that, you, that you've that you worked on and stuff like that. You can take these and you can put them, you know, just punch holes in them. And you can put them in a loose leaf notebook. And this can be like your little embroidery portfolio, something that you walk around and you can show people samples of your work. Um, so... I thought this was a pretty neat idea. I was just walking around Michael's and, and then I just saw this and I was touching them. And you know, these come in different colors, but I just happened to just pick the white because a lot of people, you know, do this type of embroidery on white t-shirts. So I thought this would be a good place to put the, um, the design on and it could serve multiple purposes. I can I can fold it, take a picture of it. And then when I got this, you know, I thought, oh, this is nice. You know, I could do take a picture of it on the back and that comes out really nice, you know. Um, and then, it, you know, it updates my Etsy shop. So I bought two of them also. I got this one, you know, cause I figured this one's pretty good for like the fall because it's like, um, you know, a brown, a brown floor, right? And then I went and I also picked out this one. Let me show you this one. This one's, um, I think a lot of people use these like in the summer. You know, so I got this one. It's about the same size too. I'm just not going to open up the whole thing and stuff. But I thought that this was pretty neat because what I can do is I can lay it on the floor or something and then like put, you know, make sure it's nice and bright and stuff. And then just take these things, like I said, and then fold it and then just put it on here. So it's a pretty cute idea, right? So it's, um. Yeah, there's another tip and trick for you, okay? <laughs> so, um, and these were not expensive, and they're called, I think they're called, like, um, photo backdrop, something like that, you know? Now, I, I did put on order. I haven't received it yet. I um, purchased a light box, okay? Um, and I asked for, uh, the one that I ordered is a, light, is a light box that has LED lights. So I thought maybe that would be pretty cool because maybe um, sometimes the lighting can be kind of funky, you know, with the windows and all that kind of stuff and the sun coming in. So I said, let me just go ahead and order me a light box with LED lights inside of it. And then with these backdrops, I can put them in and then do this and cover it and see what happens, you know? And stuff, and then I could also do some kitchen towels and, and everything, and you know, take a picture of that in there. So it's just a little neat idea that something that I thought of, and and you know, when I stitched this out, kind of worked, and I thought it was pretty neat. So I wanted to share it with you guys because I know a lot of you guys will probably be, you know, playing around with different um, stitches and all that kind of stuff. And you know, the holidays are coming and everything, and you probably want to sell stuff, maybe or you know, just test out designs and stuff. And I just thought this was a good way of, of doing it. And, you know, and we can build a little po uh, embroidery portfolio and stuff. So moving on along, well, moving, moving on along or move. next topic. Okay. Ah, here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I talked about, you know, the little tip that I got from Barb, you know, um, where she talked about putting the tissue in the needle and then like taking the photos. I showed you my backslash, my, my back, my backdrops or whatever, you know, you guys know what I mean. Okay. And the um, felt. And um, I also want to talk to you about your tension on your machine. Okay. Um, one of the things um, that I often see is that people will start embroidering a design on their machine. And then they end up, unfortunately, they end up seeing the, the, the white, the bobbin thread show up on the top. Um, one of the things that I highly recommend is always have a piece of scrap of fabric and always get in the habit of testing your tension before you start to work. Now, I know that sometimes people would be like, oh, that's a lot of work, stuff like that, you know, but I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to be more work if you end up stitching it and then it comes out funky, then you're going to be mad because you're going to be like, great, I wasted all this thread and all this time and now the white's showing up on the top. So, you know, whenever you are testing your tension, 
Um, I say always have a piece of scrap, okay? Like right now I have one. This is one that um, I did with, with a, a young lady yesterday. We were testing out tensions and stuff. And, you know, just get a piece of scrap. And I have extra um, hoops. I, you know, I have about like three five by seven hoops. And uh, the reason the reason why I have three by by three of the five by seven hoops is because I embroider a lot of the dinner napkins. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have one dinner napkin going and then I have the other two hoops prepped. And I, you know, when I don't have any sales and stuff like that, I always take one of the hoops and then I just hoop it um, with one of my, uh, you know, my napkins. I mean, well, fabric, sorry. I'm getting all tongue tied now. I'm gonna suck that. Okay, and then I just use that to um, test my tension. But I've always, I've always get in the habit of, every time I turn on my machine, every day, I test the tension. Just do the letter I. Just do the letter I, the small I. It's just a line going up and down. And you want to make sure because, you know, yesterday when I was um, working with the um, with the, the young lady and I was testing my tension and stuff like that, right away I noticed that my tension was too tight. So if you see on the bottom, the bottom right here, you can see there's very, very little bob bobbin thread. And then I went and I adjusted the tension on my bobbin case and I got a little bit of bobbin. And then here, this is uh, much better to me. You know, this, this works, this works for me, even though it could be a little more thinner, I think, but it, 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 it was enough. Okay. So, um, just get in the habit of doing that. You know, I mean, even if, if you don't want to test it all the time and stuff, then that's fine. But I really highly recommend that you always test the tension of your um, tension on your machine at least once a week, just to make sure that everything is okay. Sometimes, you know, if you change a brand of bobbin, um, that can cause a difference in your tension or the thread and stuff. You just never know. I mean, machines are very, very delicate. Just think about it. It's just a little piece of thread that's going through this whole machine and stuff. Sometimes it can just trigger something. So, you know, it's just something that um, I've always done as a habit and it, it works for me. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, you know, so that you guys can, um, you know, see if you want to do it too. <laughs> okay. Also, I wanted to show you guys, also, I have been really, really busy um, for the last two days. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, I had a video of the horror of the, the horror, my horror of 36 shirts. I was able to tackle that challenge, and now I know how to make those shirts like the back of my hand. Well, apparently the gentleman really liked the shirts, and he asked for 12 more. So I um, ordered the shirts. I was able to pump them out, no problems, no snags, no, no lost shirts. <laughs> I didn't mess up any shirts. So this morning I got up at like six o'clock in the morning and I just heat pressed all the shirts with tender touch. So um, I think he's gonna be really, really happy. The only thing I have left now is just to package them. So I have been doing that. And then my girlfriend, I felt so bad for my girlfriend Dorinda because she has wanted these um, baseball hats. And I embroidered these for her today. And I have been, ha I've had these baseball hats. I think I've, God, I think she gave it to me like two or three weeks ago. She was, she's going to kill me. You know, I was like thinking to myself, oh my gosh. So I texted her. I was like, I did not forget you. But it's just that I had so much going on with the, um, with the order. And I was helping a, a friend of mine with their Halloween costume and stuff. So it, Unfortunately, this got pushed back. So anyway, um, I also did a video while I was doing this because I wanted to show you about these hats. She bought these hats off of Amazon. Really cute hats. They're really good quality. It, they were like three for 12 bucks, something like that. So she wanted the um, golf symbols, right? The, the golf man on the, the hats. So what I did was I went on embroiderydesigns.com and I was able to find this um, design, which was, you know, matched very similar to something that she had wanted. And then she had asked 
for her name to be on the back of the hat. And this is how it came out. So I did another hat video, okay? I've already filmed it and stuff. It's just me taking the time to get it all put together and edit it. I'm hoping to have that put out there on the channel tomorrow so you guys can see it. In the video, I show how I have done this, okay? Um, I, I do the whole thing, the whole process from how um, I went into In Brilliance, how I picked the hat hoop, how I actually imported the file and how I modified it. And then how, and then I took it over to the machine. I stitched it out. So I did everything. I even left mistakes. I'm going to leave the mistakes in the video because, you know, a lot of times people do videos and they just show the whole thing perfect. But I prefer to always leave any type of errors or any kind of mistakes that I make in the videos. I know sometimes they make them a little lengthy, but the but to me, it's like I would prefer that you guys see the mistakes so that you guys can learn from it. Okay. Because that's just it's to me, it's just more raw, it's more real. It's that that's just me. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um I did um I I in the videos you're gonna see I had some challenges with the hooping, okay. I used my hat hoop, okay, that I got off of um, the hat hoop, um, I think it was hat hoop Etsy shop that I got it from. And um, I think now they have it a little different and stuff. I think now they, they actually put their company names on the hat hoops, which I think is great because, you know, they really do make um, their, their hat hoops are really, really great. So I kind of show how I put the sticky stabilizer in the back. Um, there's an easy way to do it, you know, so I, I show you how to do that. And, um, you know, and I show how I actually stitched out her name on the back of each of the shirts. I mean, they came out really, really nice. Um, you know, she wanted one in, in uh, this is uh, purple and white, and then she wanted one in red and black. And then she's got the pink and the navy and stuff. So, She's going to be looking cute out there, you know, so, you know, Dorinda, I got your hats. I'll be delivering them tomorrow. Okay. So, <laughs> so you know, um, you know, so I, I just, just so you guys know, the vi it, it's already filmed. What I did was I, I did the two hats. And then when I got to the third one, I filmed it. So, um, you know, so just so you know, okay. <laughs> That's coming soon. Okay, so um, but these are really it's a it's a really cute idea. I mean, she's the one that actually found this hat, and then she was like, "I want my name in the back." I didn't even think of doing that, and I was kind of like, "Oh, that's pretty cool," you know. So I was like, "Okay." So I first I kind of told her no because I was afraid. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, how it was gonna come out. But um, you know, now you know, I kind of liked it that she asked because when. You know, sometimes when people ask for unique things, that's what kind of pushes you to that next level to like try it. I mean, when she asked for their name, I, I will tell you, I even asked her, I said, where did you get those hats? Because what went through my mind was, mm, what if I screw it up? I got to replace these hats, you know, but um, no, came out pretty good. I think she's going to be real happy with them and stuff like that. So I'm like, yes. So I'm pretty content with that and stuff. So um, also, I wanted to show you also, I did two birthday shirts for a friend of mine. Um, his daughter is going to turn nine soon. I wanted to share it because it came out so cute. I'm really proud of myself. This I did a mermaid shirt, and it came out really, really cute. I should take it out of the bag, but let me see. Oh, I think the light's a little funky. Sorry. Okay, so there you go. So I did this little mermaid shirt. This was a, let me tell you, though, this was a lot of work. This took about a whole hour to um, stitch the whole thing because I had, I, I used uh, the sprint, the um, glitter vinyl for the number nine. And then I used, uh, this is glitter vinyl also. And then here I used HTTV, um, you know, heat vinyl transfer. I used, um for here, but this, this isn't sparkly and stuff. So I think it came out really cute. So I just wanted to show it off, you know, so, <laughs> cause I'm kind of proud of myself with this shirt. I was like, wow, I did pretty good. This is not bad. 
And then, um, you know, when you do one for one, you got to do for the other. And so that's what my mom used to say when me and my sister were growing up. You know, you can't just buy for one and not buy for the other. So I made her sister, even though it's not her sister's birthday, but I figured her sister would like the unicorn and stuff. So I did this one. This was a pretty easy one, too. And stuff. I really like doing these these shirts. These shirts are really, really cute and stuff. I wish I had a little daughter, you know, and stuff. But um, I got a son, and I, and I love my son to death. And, you know, after I gave birth, I don't care what people say, that hurts, okay? So after I gave birth and I had all that pain, I said, forget about it. I ain't having no more. So I was like, no, I'll get a dog. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so, oh, and there's one more thing that I wanted to mention also. Um, You know, a the biggest thing, um, one of the things that happens to me a lot while I'm embroidering, okay, is you'll be sitting there and you're embroidering and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden you need a scissor or you need um, tweezers and stuff like that. Um, you got to be organized and stuff. So one of the things that I did to help me get organized is, you know, um, I got this little thing i got it from michael's it was inexpensive these are kind of cheap you can wait for them to go on sale too sometimes they'll go on sale because you know christmas is coming up and everything so when christmas is coming up they put a lot of sales out there this really works for me you know because i'm gonna tell you something i put all my embroidery scissors and everything on the top so whenever i'm embroidering i mean whether i'm embroidering on my multi-needle or i'm embroidering on a single I just roll it with me. So this is always at my hip. Um, so I always have all my needles in here. I have bobbins in here. I have all my snips, all my em um, embroidery um, scissors, you know, the snips and everything. Tweezers too. Now that I'm looking in here, what are the great things that I have in here that um, you guys can um, look at? One of the things that I really use a lot tweezers so if you guys can get your hands on a pair of big um tweezers this is the best and i'm gonna tell you why do not get in the habit of putting your fingers in the embroidery um area especially by the needle try really i know it's tempting because i'm not gonna lie and say i don't do it myself I do at times I put, I put my hands in there, but a lot of times what I do also is I, what happened was I saw a picture. Somebody posted a picture on Facebook of a needle going through their finger. And I, you know, it, I mean, it was in there. And when I saw that, I was like, Oh, oh you know, I, I don't want that to happen to me because I know I'm a chicken and stuff. I mean, I have um, in the past cut my fingers with rotary cutters, okay? So I learned really, really quick that you gotta be very careful with those rotary cutters. Um, so what I did to help with the rotary cutters, let me show you what the ruler that I use, this is really uh, a good one, is I get one like this, okay? It's, it's, you know, don't use a small, thin one, because what happens is when you're cutting your fabric, you put it in there, you, you put your hand on there, and then, you know, you start to go like this with the rotary cutter, and because your ruler is thin, the chances of you cutting your finger can be very high. So I always, you know, I just went and I just got one of these um, rulers. It's a Cricut ruler. And I know you don't have to get Cricut. You, I mean, there's so many rulers and stuff like that. But you just get a ruler that's thick enough where there's plenty of space for you to put your hand on there. And then also what I did do is I bought these little sticky grips also. And I just put it on the ruler so that way it's not sliding. Okay, it doesn't slide on the fabric and stuff like that. So this works really, really well. So it's just another little tip, okay? You know, because, you know, safety, that, I mean, that's important. I cut my finger twice and that was not fun because I'm telling you, rotary cutters, the rotary cutters will really slice off your skin. So again, like 
when you're doing the embroidery and the needles going up and down, even sewing and stuff like that, you know, we always have your hands in that area. Please be careful. But with embroidery, what happens is sometimes you have a lot of jump stitches, right? And you want to cut them. So I use the tweezers so that I can pick up the, the piece of, of thread that I want. And then I'll take some um, snips or your embroidery scissors, whatever, pick it up, cut it, and then you pull it away. You know, don't get in the habit of putting your fingers in there and then sniffing and stuff. You just never know. Just, you know, be careful. That's all I'm saying, because that's a big thing. So I just, you know, this is uh, something that, to me, it's, it's this is worth the money. You know, um, I'm sure that if you do a Google on Amazon or or if you go to maybe a, a sewing shop or something like that, they got to have um, long tweezers because I have two. I have one. This is another one that I got. See, so I have two. I have this. This came with my Cricut. OK. And then I also have this one. And this is what came with my um, my brother machine, not the SC 1900. This came with the, the big baby over here. Um, but, you know, these are really, really good because it prevents you from putting your your hands in the area by the needle. And you just, you know, it's it's I use them a lot. I really do and stuff. And then I do have another one that I sometimes use, which is this one. But this one is mostly for the heat press for when I'm um, doing vinyl on shirts. And I use my heat press sometimes, you know, it's very, very hot. So this is what I use to um, pick up the, uh, the plastic and pull it away. So that way I'm not burning my hands and stuff like that. So, you know, that's just something that, you know, it's really, really important and stuff. And then also, um, this is pretty neat. This is something that, you know, this actually came with my scissors. These are ginger um, embroidery scissors. They're very, this is a very, very good brand. Um, their their um, scissors are pretty solid. But this, I what I liked is embroidery scissors are extremely, extremely sharp. Okay, they really are very, very pointy. What I really liked too is that this came with a little case where I can just go ahead and store it. Because sometimes what will happen is, you know, you throw your scissors in there and then you put your hand in there. And then next thing you know, you just pricked yourself and stuff. And it's, you know, this is pretty neat. It's um, a ginger brand and stuff. So this is uh, something, you know, cool. You know, you really don't even have to buy this brand either. You can make this on your SC1900. I mean, think about it. It's just a little, it's just a little slot for you to put your scissor in. You can make one, okay? And stuff. So, you know. And another thing I wanted to, to share also, since we're talking scissors and stuff, never, ever, ever, okay, because let me tell you, everybody in this house knows, don't you touch my sewing scissors, okay, because <laughs> your, my sewing scissors are have a purpose, okay? If, if you have a good pair of sewing scissors to cut fabric, Make sure you only cut fabric with those scissors. Warn everybody in your house that you're killing if they touch those scissors. Because what's going to happen is it's going to dull. It's going to get dull. And I'm, t I'm speaking from experience. I know because I have bought these really pretty um, Cricut fabric scissors. And they felt so smooth and everything. Next thing you know, I started going crazy. I was cutting everything. I started cutting them you know, fabric, I started cutting uh, vinyl, then I started cutting paper and all that stuff. And then before you know it, when I went to cut the fabric, it, was, it wasn't it was cutting the fabric very good, like before. Before it was cutting like butter. Then it, it just wasn't cutting smooth anymore. So I learned the hard way. So I had to go out and buy another pair of scissors. And then that's when I found out, you know, that when, you know, that's why when you go to, you know, people's sewing rooms and stuff, they have like a whole galore of scissors. They're like, I got a, a scissor for vinyl. I have a scissor for fabric. I have a scissor for embroidery and stuff. And then, you know, I have a scissor for applique. 
which is now like me. Now I have all those <laughs> scissors too, you know? So just, you know, something else that I, I just wanted to share. You know, don't just think you're going to be able to buy one pair of scissors and that's it. You know, I mean, it's just, no. And then you have the curved scissors and you got the pointy scissors. I mean, there's, I think there's a scissor for everything out there. But anyway, just something, you know, to think about, you know. And then um, also another tip also, if you can organize your embroidery threads, okay? That makes things so much easier, especially when you're looking when, you, when you're embroidering and, you know, you have to get that next color, okay? Um, usually you can get like an embroidery rack, like what I have over here. Sometimes those stand on a table or stuff, or you can keep them in the box or keep them in a box or a little, a little plastic drawer, something like that. But I, I highly recommend look at the number of each of those different colors, put them in order, because as you are embroidering, it makes it a lot easier for you to find the next color that you need in your design. So, you know, don't, um, you know, sometimes people will just throw their, their, their thread everywhere. And the next thing you know, a design that really should take about a half hour to stitch ended up taking about an hour and a half because a lot of times what happened, they're like, oh, what color? I need color number five. Well, where's color number five? And they're looking all over the place for color number five. And if they had everything, um, you know, in order, then it would be so much easy for you to just find that next color. So it's just good little habits and stuff that, you know, I myself have done. I mean, even... Every evening when I leave my sewing room, one of the things that I do is I always make sure that everything is put back in its place, okay? I try to keep everything as neat as possible because what happens is then when I need to work on the next project, I know exactly where everything is. I know where my scissors are. I know my threads are, are very well organized and I can just go ahead and start sewing. I mean, I'm not going all over the place looking for stuff because in the beginning when I started doing this, I didn't, I wasn't as organized. So what ended up happening was um, I would put a scissor down somewhere and then it was bad, you know? I mean, it even got to the point where I owned um, four pairs of the same scissors because I couldn't find, <laughs> I couldn't find the scissor. So I would go to Joanne's and buy it again. And then I would go and buy it again and again. And then when I decided to finally organize everything, I ended up finding out, that I had four of these. So I was kind of like, man, I spent a lot of money on these scissors. And they're not, you know, they're, these are pricey scissors, especially the, the ginger brand. They're not, these are not cheap scissors and stuff. So I was kind of like, ugh. So I learned the hard way to, um, to, you know, to be organized and stuff. And then as I'm looking through my little box, here's another thing too. Um, who would have thought, you know, this. Um, Paper clips, okay? These are really, really good when you are embroidering um, shirts or things that are in the way and you need to roll them up and you want to, to clip it, okay? Um, they have something else called Wonder Clips, a little plastic clips, and those work good too, you know? But sometimes you have something that's a little tough and you... you Plastic clips really just don't work. And if you guys don't know what Wonder Clips are, let me um, let me show you what they are. Okay, I got them right over here. Let me pull them out. They come in in two different sizes. Um, here you go. These are these are Wonder Clips. Okay, they're just little clips and stuff. A lot of people use that for sewing to hold things together and stuff. These are pretty, pretty good. And then I have the small ones too. Okay. Um, you know, so these are wonder clips and stuff, but sometimes you have something that, you know, you just really need something to hold on to really good. Right. Um, these are great, but I find that sometimes in those situations, this is better. So, you know, if you guys, um, just have a couple of these. Just keep them in your sewing room just in case while you're embroidering and you need to roll something up and get it out of the way for, for the needle so it doesn't get under there or something. 
and, and this good thing, okay? And um, another thing, painter's tape, okay? Especially if you are embroidering hats. If you're doing baseball hats and you're embroidering hats, what you want to do is you want to keep a uh, painter's tape. And when I load my video, you're going to see what I use it for. What I actually do, and I'll just tell you real quick, is what I do is I, I tape the side of it. Because what happens is when the needle goes up and down, there's a little knob on there that sometimes hits the hat. And when it hits the hat, it's going to do, do a, it's going to make a scuff on the hat on the hat. And I show you on my Boricua hat that I made, I didn't use the, the, the tape and it was hitting the side of the hat and, you know, it's, it has a little scuff on the hat. And, um, you know, I, I didn't really care because I was kind of like, okay, well, you know, it, it's just a hat for me. I'm the one that's wearing it. But, you know, I made sure that when I was making Dorinda's hat, I had plenty of, uh, of tape, okay? <laughs> Because I was not gonna mess up that girl's hat, especially since I had a, she had a way for him for so long and stuff. So you know, and let me see. I think those are the quick tips and tricks that I have for today. Let me see. Let me check the chat rooms. Wow, we got a lot of people. Let me go down and see if there are any questions from folks, and maybe I can help you guys with something and stuff. I see Blanca, Charmaine, Norma. Hey, guys. Hey, Sophie. Sophia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, Robin. Love the shirt. Thank you. Hey, Miss Smiles. Read the argument. Oh, read the manual. There is a lot of good information. Yes, Miss Smiles, there is. Um. One of the things that I started doing also is I did post a couple of the videos on the LCD screen of the SC1900. I am going to be doing more. The thing is, there is so much that to put it all in one video would probably be like, you know, five hours or something like that. So what I want to do is I want to cut them down a little short videos. That way, whenever you guys... um need um, information in any particular area, you can just search for that area and then we're good, okay? So um, I did show, um, you know, I was I showed Sophie a little trick that I had recently learned about um, the sewing where it had the back and forward capability um, for sewing and stuff, but I'm going to do a video on that. And also I know that um, Felix had reached out and he had asked me about the buttonhole you know, the, the, the foot for the buttonhole. So I'm going to do a short one on that too, so that you guys know how to uh, make a buttonhole and, and know how to use it and stuff when you're sewing and everything. And then also what I was thinking is, um, you know, there are a lot of things that we can sew and embroider as well. And because these machines do both, I was thinking that um, maybe I could work on some projects where we can do like a little zip pouch and while doing the zip pouch, we can embroider our name or initials on it or just a pretty little design on it. And, you know, just finish a whole little product project. Um, so I was thinking that that would be pretty cool and stuff. So. Um, hey, Barb, how you doing? Hey, Evelyn. Hey, Ruth. Hi, Amanda. Thanks. Yes, I reached a thousand. I couldn't believe it. So I made this shirt today because <laughs> I was like, wow, a thousand subscribers. I was like, I, I, I was like, wow, I was really shocked. I really was. And so I hope it continues to grow because I will say I've been getting so many great feedback about the channel and people really seem to be enjoying these um, happy hours and they, you know, they really seem to be learning a lot of all the stuff that I've been able to share. And so, so I really want to continue to do that. And I want to really start doing projects now because I think that would be kind of fun. And then I was also thinking, um, you know, we have our Facebook group and I was thinking the Facebook group would be kind of fun if maybe we could do project of the week and maybe I could post a video of how, you know, I make something and then folks can try to make the same thing. And then we can share pictures of how everything came out. I thought that would be kind of fun. 
So, you know, I got some ideas and stuff because I really want to make this group um, a lot of fun and, and very supportive and everything. And, you know, I know a lot of you guys just got the machine and um, it's really great. You know, so I really want to make the best of all this, you know, and stuff. So let me see, Jennifer, great idea. Could you make pillows out of that also, even frame it and hang it in a children's room? Make pillows. You know, you can, you can sew, you know, you can sew your, your pillows, Jennifer. Um, you can sew a pillow and embroider your, your pillow and stuff. Um, yeah, you know, and, and I thought, you know, you, I've seen it, you know, um, some people will take a pillowcase. Um, you know, when you, when, when you buy like a set, uh, a bed set. You have the sheet, the flash sheet, and all that stuff, and it comes with the pillowcases. The edge of the, the the pillowcase, a lot of people, what they do is they embroider their kid's name on it. So that's that's a pretty um, – that's something that, that you can do and stuff. Um, and you can also make a reading pillow. Reading pillows are pretty cool, too. A lot of kids like that. It's, a reading pillow is, is a pillow with a little pocket and stuff. Um, I buy them pre-made already, you know, and I get them in bulk, but, and then I put them on the big machine, you know, to put the, the person's name on it. But a lot of people, what they do is they buy the different fabrics and they create the, the pill, the pocket, and then they just embroider the, the pocket and stuff. So they, they, you know, kids kind of like that, you know, and stuff. So let's see. Um, it really looks it really looks good for being stitched on felt. What a great idea. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I'm trying to trying to see how it can be more efficient, you know, and stuff. Because I know that some people go out and they'll buy fabric, buy white fabric, and then they cut it up. But what, what went through my mind was you buy the fabric, then you have to cut it and all that kind of stuff. This is already cut. It's it's already cut for you you know so all you have to do is just you know um hoop it and stitch it out and there you go and it's done and what i like is you fold it up take a picture and then you can put it in a little notebook and it's your little embroidery portfolio you can show off your work and stuff so i you know i thought you know it's just it's a smart idea you know and stuff um let's see uh it really looks, okay. Do you use stabilizer with the felt? Yes, I do. Hey, Leslie. Yes, I, I do use the stabilizer with the felt. Now, I do not use tearaway with the felt, okay? Because remember, this is just a sample. It's, nobody's going to wear it. You're not going to, you're not going to, um, you know, wash it and all that kind of stuff, okay? So what I did was I used a tearaway stabilizer with this. Because, and then I just, you know, tear it from the back. So, um, oh, I put this light on and I think it's too bright. There you go. So, um, I use tearaway stabilizer and, um, you know, because it's just felt. It's just felt. Now, of course, if you're going to do this on a shirt, I don't recommend that you use a tearaway stabilizer. I recommend that you use a cutaway stabilizer. Because remember, a shirt's going to be washed several, several times. Um, tear away stabilizers that dissolves and then eventually it's going to, it's going to go away in the wash and then the shirt, you know, everything's going to like crumbled up. And the last thing you want is to give somebody a gift or, you know, sell it to a customer. And then they say, you know, man, I love the shirt, but after like the fifth wash, it was gone, you know? So, um, cut away, um, cut, cut away for wearing. But if you're, if you're going to do your samples on your felt, um, just use tearaway. Tearaway is cheaper too, you know. So, you know, just you know, save your cutaway for the good stuff, you know. Um, let's see. I seldom ever mess up with the tension. I see necessary because the problem today with embroidering. Yep. Test, test, Robin. You got to test that tension. I mean, I I try to do it. Every time before I'm going to start to embroider, I always do the, the test stitch. You know, like I said, you know, always have a piece of fabric. Just do the yellow eye, just the eye. And once and, and just check it. And then if you're good, you're good to go. But then, you know, I I would prefer 
that you check it. And then if it's messed up on the check, then you're good <laughs> because now you know you can fix it before you actually do the embroidery. Because let me tell you, it really sucks when you when you have your item in there and you're embroidering and then all of a sudden it messes up. And then it's like next thing you know, you're going to throw away the towel or the shirt. You don't really have to throw it away. I mean, you can take out the stitches and stuff, but it is. Um, a lot. Oh, and you know what? I got another tip for you guys. If you, you know, I have mentioned before about the Peggy stitch eraser, right? For when you're making mistakes when you're embroidering, right? So, um, you know, that can be pretty expensive. That's an expensive piece of equipment. Um, I don't have it with me. Okay. So, but here's, here is something that, oh, here it is. Here is something else that you can use. A razor. Okay. So what I would do is, you know, because the, the Peggy situation, it's a great product. Don't get me wrong. It really, really is. But not everybody got like $80 to, to buy something, right? So these are the disposable razors that, you know, use to, you know, shave, you know. So what you do is when you are um, embroidering, right? Let's say you got, you got a mistake, right? Um, don't take away your stabilizer, leave the stabilizer on, then you take the razor and you just go like this. And then what you're doing, you know, is you're breaking the thread and then it's easier for you to pull it out. So oh, it's just another neat little trick that I, I have, you know, just take your, your thing, lay it on the table. And then just go like this, and what you, you you'll see that it starts to fuzz up a little bit, and it just helps you with removing stitches and stuff. So that's just something else that you know just came to my mind that that I have here and stuff. So um, let's see. Um, let me make sure I get everybody. Hey, Iris, how you doing? Um. Hey, Renee. Um, haven't tried the caps. I'm afraid that the pressure foot is too low. Haven't tried the caps. Iris, I don't know what you mean. Email me. <laughs> I can help you. Um, Miss Smiles, haven't tried the hat yet. Miss Smiles, you got to try the hat. I'm telling you. You know, I have to, I have to be honest. I am really starting to like embroidering hats. I really, I went on Jiffy Shorts and I bought 10 black hats. <laughs> and now that Dorinda had bought these hats, now I want to go to Amazon. I want to buy more hats because they got some really cute designs. Now, the only caveat, though, is remember, your the space that you have to embroider hats, it's not that big, Okay. So I always try to look for designs that are like three by three, okay? Well, you can get a four by four and then you just shrink it up a little bit. You can do that using um, in brilliance. You can just shrink it and stuff. But um, I also show you on the video um, that I'm going to, I will put it out tomorrow because I've already, like I said, I filmed it. I just got to edit it and put it out there. And I'll show you exactly how to um, go in in brilliance and create the file for these hats. And stuff so that way you know you can uh, fit the the um picture in there and stuff so you know but um yeah i i, I love doing the hats and stuff miss miles i think you're gonna get addicted to the hats <laughs> i should invest in a hat hoop yeah they're they are really this is the one that i got i got this off of an etsy shop and it's called hat hoop and it's really, it's it's a very, very good piece. I mean, it's really, really, really good and stuff. Now, I have heard some folks do this also. This is another thing you can do. Um, you know, I haven't done it yet, but I, I've, I've seen people do this. They take this. This is a clipboard. You can get this from the dollar store, right? It has like this little clip. Because think about it. This is really the same thing as this. OK, um, well, you know, you're going to put this in here, right? In this little flap right here. So I've seen some people take this 
and they cut it out. And then they use this. All they do is they, they cut this out, right? And that way they have this, and then they use this. I keep saying this, but y'all know what I'm talking about because I'm pointing. They use the, the little thing here to hold on to the, um, you know, to the flap. They just put this underneath in here, and then they, they hoop it in the machine that way. So something you could try. Um, I haven't tried it, but I did see one young lady that she had it, and she was like, I'm not spending money on a hat hoop. And she seemed to have been embroidering just fine. So, um, you know, you could try it. The only, the only thing is it probably might be a little hard to cut it out, but um, I would say just take it and trace your hoop and then just cut it out and then give it a shot, you know? What's the worst thing that could happen is that it doesn't work and you wasted a dollar. You know, that's about it. <laughs> but you try, you know, and stuff. Um, let's see what else. I tried pinning the cap. Unfortunately, I almost ruined my machine, so I haven't tried it since. Oh, Iris. Okay. Well, the thing, the thing, Iris, that I would say, and that's another thing. That's another another thing that um, I make a lot of mistakes when I'm rushing too. And I'm not saying that you were rushing, Iris. That's what I'm saying, but something that just comes to my mind. Um, when I was doing Dorinda's shirts today, what I did was. I took uh, Mello to doggy daycare. So that way he's out there and I don't have to worry about the dog running around and stuff. And I was able to focus on the, on the, on the hats and hoop them the right way and take my time and film and all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of times, you know, it is hard because, you know, it hooping the hat is tricky. It really is. It's not like um, it's not like a towel. A towel, you can just slide it into the machine and stuff like that. You really have to position the hat correctly in the hoop, and then you have to take the hoop with the hat, and it's a little challenging to get the the hat inside the machine. You know, so that is something that you really have to take your time, and you're even going to see it in the video when I hooped her hat. I made a couple of mistakes hooping it too. So, you know, Iris, I'm hoping that don't give up on the hats because I really think that you're going to start to enjoy making the hats and stuff. It's just a bad experience. You know, experiences is, is how you learn. So I don't want you to shy away from anything. Be daring. You can do it, girl. You can do it. And so, and, um, you know, and if you need help, reach out to me. Okay. I have no problem helping people and stuff. So don't worry about that. Okay. Can you do children caps on the hat hoop? Yes, Miss um, Powell's. Yes, you can. Um, you can do children's hats. You can do this is adults. You can do children's and stuff. So don't worry. Um, yes, you can. Um, let me see. Very cute. Very cute. Beautiful mermaid. What font is that? That is my favorite font, Stitchtopia. If you go to stitchtopia.com and it's called um, Maya. Maya is M-A-Y-A-H, and it's number two. That's the font that you want to search for, and it says Stitchtopia. It's, it's my favorite. I really love, I just love the way the script comes together. It, it's it's a beautiful font. It's, it's like now I'm addicted to this font. I really am. It's like everything. I have so, so many other fonts, but then I, I always end up back with this one because I just think it's so cute. You know, I love it and stuff. I guess you like to watch HTTV. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I like that. Sh I like that channel and stuff. Um, oh, let me go back. Um, I have a ruler like that, and I purchased it. Safety handle holder. Yep. Yeah. I oh, they have a ruler with um a safety handle holder. And such cups. I got to Google that. I want to see that. Yeah, because I slice, like I said, I sliced my finger twice. And that was not fun. That wasn't fun at all and stuff. Um, let me see. Um, tried the buttonhole last weekend. Yeah, the buttonhole, it's not, it's not hard. It really isn't. Once, once you got it figured out, then you're, you're good. 
and stuff. Um, the period one showed last week. What size USB should I get for the umbrellas? Does it matter? No, Renee, it doesn't matter. Just get the whole purpose for your USB flash drive is just to put the file on. The files are not that big. Trust me. I mean, you can, my, my USB files are not. So don't go out spending all this money on this USB. There's got to be all this memory and all that kind of, that space and all that. No, just get, get a bunch of cheap ones and you should be good to go. Don't, don't worry about that and stuff. Um, Love the dog collar embroidery. Yeah, I think I hey hey jo Joanna, <laughs> Miss McCarthy. <laughs> I um I could have done better in that video though. Um I I liked the um embroidery on the dog leash, but I think I should have used a thicker font. You know, that was the only thing after I, I finished embroidering, I was kinda like, oh, I picked a very thin font. But you know, sometimes you're your own worst critic and stuff like that. But it was my first dog leash, so I didn't think it was that bad, you know? And stuff. Um, is the SC1900 a low shaft or high shaft? I don't know what that means, Wanda. Um, I, I don't know what that means. I really don't. I don't know if, if you are referring to, and I'm wondering if you're referring to the opening of the sewing machine, um, you know, the space between it. Um, so I don't, I, sorry, <laughs> you got me on that one. I, I don't know what you mean by, by low and high shaft. So if somebody out there knows what that is and knows the answer, that would be great. Um, is in brilliance a good investment? Um, to me, Charmaine, it is. This is one of the things that I recommend that you do. In Brilliance, if you go to their website, they do have a 30-day trial, okay? So you can download the software for 30 days and try it out. I recommend doing that. Um, the it, it Brilliance Essentials costs, it's, it's about 120, something like that, something, you know, around that. It's, it's not that, that much. Um, but I would go to their website, download it, Try it for 30 days to make sure it's something that, you know, works for you, okay? Um, I have the whole suite, um, you know, so it, but, and I've been using it and it seems to be working pretty good for me. But there are others, others out there. You know, the, the reason why I chose In Brilliance is because I have a Mac and there's a lot of um, soft, you know, embroidery softwares out there that just don't run on a Mac. And in Brilliance does. And so that's that's really the, the reason why I chose it. And um, I've been playing with it. And it seems to be really easy to use. So, you know, I, I've been pretty happy with it. Um, let's see. Oh, thanks, Vaughn and Shirley. Yeah, I got a thousand. I can't believe it. I'm like, yay. <laughs> I won't give up to that. Great, Iris. There you go. See, <laughs> you can do it. We can all do it. Um, for the pressure foot. Okay, you could use bathroom safety bars that have suction cup grips on them. Bathroom safety bars. Hmm. Iris, I gotta try that. Let's see. Oh, the length of the pressure foot. It's the length of the pressure foot. Oh, Miss King. Yeah, Susan King. The length of the pressure foot. Okay. The length of the pressure foot. Um, I still, you, you know, the thing is, <laughs> I only had two sewing machines in my life, okay? I had the Brother AC1850, and then I had the SC1900, okay? Um, so I can't really compare that much, so, um, but I will say I'm kind of content with it, so. Um, what other softwares do you use to digitize? Um, Hey, Lisa, um, I have only used in Brilliance. Um, I have heard of others like So What Pro. 
Um, that's another one that's pretty popular out there. Um, but those run on Windows machines. And because I'm a Mac user, I've only been using in Brilliance because they aren't, um, it, it seems to, you know, I think that's really the only one maybe that runs on a Mac. I could be wrong. But when I was looking, when I was looking for software, um, all I found was in Brilliance that, that worked on a Mac. Um, our machine uses a low. Okay, there you go. Low. Okay. <laughs> we'll check the free trial. Yes. Yes, Charmaine. That's the best way. I mean, I would say check the free trial because that way you'll know whether you want to commit to it or not. I mean, I, I like it. I mean, it seems to be easy. And they have a great customer service. And there's a lot of tons of videos on that software if ever, like, you need help in trying to figure something out. So that's another reason why I chose to use that one as, as well. Um, <laughs> All right, guys. So it is nine o'clock, and oh, it's past nine o'clock. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for um, tuning in and um, watching the video and stuff. And thank you so so much for all the support um, from everybody out there. I think that is like so awesome. I'm so happy that I finally reached a thousand subscribers and stuff. Um, so please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, you know, as always, if you need help or you need assistance or something, please feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to me at uniquely unique designs for you at AOL.com. I'll make sure I put all the information below so that way you guys can um, contact me if you need help with anything and stuff. Um, if you have any ideas that you would like for us to talk about during embroidery happy hour, please share them. I remember once somebody had mentioned stabilizers and um, I did a happy hour on stabilizers. So if there's another topic that you guys want me to um, talk about, just let me know and you know I can put it out there. Um, I'm gonna continue to pop out those um, videos and stuff um, so that we can learn more about the machine and its functionality and stuff. Um, so like I said, you know, I really appreciate all the support that I'm getting from all of you. I think that it's like so awesome. And I'm so happy, you know, to, to know that, you know, I'm really like helping you guys and um, learning more about the craft and everything. I'm also going to explore in other areas also, like um, I want to do stuff on the Cricut, learning about H A, you know, heat vinyl transfer, using my heat press and stuff so that you guys can learn about other stuff as well. So, um, you know, hopefully this, this channel can continue to grow and stuff. So, um, you know, I just want to say goodbye. And if you, you know, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. Also, we have a Facebook group, Embroidery Happy Hour um, Adventures. Please join the Facebook group. I know right now we have about, I think it's close to 113 members. Um Join the group. The group is really, really great. So you can post all your projects out there. If you have any questions, you can ask the questions there. Also, it's a I, you know, I want that place. I want that Facebook group to be a safe place for all of us to share our ideas and for us to encourage one another. Um, so far, I'm really, really happy with the outcome of you know the community that we have. So I wanted to, like I said, continue to grow and, and support each other and stuff. So anyway, um, you guys have a great weekend. Please be safe. Enjoy your machines. Have fun sewing and embroidery. And I hope to see you guys next week. And I will make sure to post the videos on these hats that I made for Dorinda. Okay? So I will talk to you guys later. Have a great night. Love you guys all. Bye.